Hello, I am your resume reader, Crow Song, and today I will be reading to you from Royal Guard by Mirio Wright. Now, on to chapter 11, Stables. The two of them walked over to the stables. More accurately, the taller one was being dragged there by his feisty and oddly pissed prince. The luscious green grass danced in the wind. The neighing of horses could be heard from afar. After they both have arrived at the large land that was where the horses usually roamed, America finally let go of his guard's sleeve. Are you angry at me? His guard asked, a little curious and concerned. I don't think so, the shorter one replied also in a state of confusion. He did not know why he was angry, but he didn't think it was the Russians' fault. The tricolored country opened their mouth to probably ask another question, but before he did, the American chimed in. Hey, girl! He ran over to one of the stable doors. Inside was a majestic white horse. She let out a few neighs of delight as the prince approached her. The Russian followed next to the prince as they got closer. Personally, the taller boy had never seen a horse in his life. He was fascinated by anything new. She was a horse that was appointed specifically to me by my dad. I'm never allowed outside of the palace, so... I guess horse riding was another form of entertainment for me while I was stuck within the castle walls. The American reached out a hand and rubbed her neck. I assume you've never ridden a horse before, have you? He turned back to the taller boy. Russia only shook his head slightly. Hmm, you want to ride her? America asked enthusiastically. I would never. She is yours and only yours. Besides, I do not know how to ride a horse. Well, from now on, I'm making her your horse, too, okay? As you wish, the other replied without hesitation. As for the riding part, I can ride with you. Just hold on to me from behind, and you'll be fine. America's expression turned into a dorky smile. Before his guard could object, he had already taken the horse out and was placing a saddle on. So the royal guard just kept his mouth shut. A small part of him wanted to ride the horse, but he repeated in his head that it would seem very unprofessional to be using the prince's gifts. America placed one foot on the footing hold of the saddle and leaped into the seat. He held the rein firmly and turned to face his guard, giving him the message that he was waiting on Russia to get on to. Russia also got on the horse. As per the prince's request, he also hung on the tight part. The tricolored country held on to the country in front of him by the waist. This made the shorter one's heart beat faster and it sent shivers down his spine. Ignoring these signs, he pulled on the reins, and and they started moving at a leisurely pace. It was just a nice stroll on the horse admiring the scenery, and the large field of grass that seemed to stretch for thousands of miles. How about we go a little faster? America's smile became a reckless smirk as he pulled on the reins harder, which made the horse went faster. It wasn't incredibly fast, but as time went by, the horse went faster and faster until they were riding at full speed. The prince was having a blast. The Russian was just admiring everything, and his eyes sparkled in amusement. Suddenly, out of nowhere, America's arms started throbbing in pain from the cramp from that morning. His grip on the rein faltered, and he started to slide off without any support or anything to hold on to. Russia noticed a second too late, so he couldn't pull the other back up. 
In a split second, the Russian slipped on purpose and grabbed the prince in a hug from behind. They both slammed onto the ground with a loud thud. Well, more specifically, Russia did. He hugged the prince from behind to cushion his fall. Both were cut off guard. Cold sweat dripped down their faces as the stiff prince started to relax. Remind me never to ride a horse with cramping arms ever again. He let out a low chuckle. Are you two okay? They heard a voice getting closer towards them. They both got up and Russia let go of the prince. He immediately wanted to start hu hugging him more for some odd reason. The voice they heard was Germany and Poland rushing up to them. We saw what happened. Are you two okay? Germany asked with a bit of concern in his voice, despite having a neutral face. We're fine. What brings your highnesses here? Russia questioned. America's mood immediately dropped again. He was suddenly pissed again. Well, we're taking care of our horses who pull our carriage. Poland held up a bucket of water in his hands. His tone had the slightest bit of annoyance. What happened out there? I don't feel like explaining, but long story short, we fell. America grit his teeth and said in a offensive yet sarcastic tone. I see. I hope you're more careful next time. I'd be worried if something happened to Russia, Germany said nonchalantly. Anyway, Russia, do you want to stay in my room back like we did in old days? America snapped. Sorry, but he's going to be with me. He attempted to hide the malice in his voice with no prevail. Well, I think he should get to choose what he wants, Germany only shrugged and turned to the Russian. Without a second of delay, Russia replied, Sorry, Germany. If the prince requests me, then I must fulfill my orders. Germany nodded with a smile. Okay, that's reasonable. Have a nice day. They waved off and left. What's your relationship with him? America asked once the German was out of sight. He said it in an annoyed tone. Pardon? What's your relationship with him? America repeated with many emotions mixed into that sentence. We were brothers in a way. His father took me in when my father couldn't take care of me. I was never quite allowed out of the palace. I was only allowed in my room, in the dueling hall, the training hall, and the backyard. Germany always saw me as a brother, and always snuck me into his room at night. It was fun times. I'd say maybe we could even consi be considered half-brothers, if you will. At least that's how I feel about it. He explained with an unchanged and neutral expression. I see. The American mood immediately lifted once the heavy burden had been lifted off of his chest. A smile immediately stretched on his face. How about we find something else to do then? It was around midnight. The hooting owls have already awoken from their deep slumber. In the guest room of the Kingdom of Britannia, two men were inside. One was sitting on a chair in front of the desk. The other was on the bed, only a few inches apart from the desk. Germany suddenly burst out into a laughing fit. That American prince is certainly a handful sometimes. What do you mean? The Polish boy inquired. He was glaring every time he saw me, no? Germany smirked. Yes, I noticed that. He's in love. Germany cocked his head. I noticed that too. 
He likes Russia, right? Poland also started smiling. Indeed, they both love each other very, very much. They just haven't realized it. I swear I was about to beat the shit out of the prince if he didn't stop glaring at you, Poland said, amused. He leaned closer to the German man who sat on the chair in front of the desk. Germany chuckled. Don't do that. He just doesn't know that I only consider him as a brother. Germany pecked the Polish boy on the lips, then got up. I expect a wedding invitation in the future, Germany said jokingly, and readjusted his glasses. But yet, he also somewhat met what he said. And that is the end of this chapter. I hope you've enjoyed. There was some misunderstandings, and oh god, that's always a trope that makes it hard to read. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please join us on the Discord. I take requests for stories. We do have permission for Shy Melody now, so that will come eventually. We also have a channel called Flag, so Frisk doesn't um, commit arson. It's a channel for um, flags, and like you just post flags that you're having trouble with so that you have a reference consistently somewhere else. It's especially helpful if you're frustrated with a certain flag. Anyway, I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye!